In today's video, we're gonna check out some more creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I bet that was really scary for people in New York. I don't know if they experience earthquakes often, but yeah, that's pretty crazy. I hope everyone's all right. Speaking of Mike Tyson, this, these people that think that he don't stand a chance against Jake Paul because he's too old, I, like, I think you're, I think you're crazy. Well, they're I, definitely uninformed. Yeah, because the, the, here's the thing: he is 57 years old. He he will be 58 when they fight. He he has had a long fighting career. He he has been knocked out by massive men like Lennox Lewis and Xander Holyfield. You know, he's he's had a lot of blows. And, you know, it's yeah. long, you know, long past the time where most people ever fight. The 45 today is 45 with testosterone replacement and human oh, growth right, hormone right. and peptides. Well, that's, and well, that's what I'm saying. My, this Mike Tyson, yeah, he's 57, but he got access to everything. everything. And he's also doing this very unique uh, kind of training with electrical muscular stimulation that I've talked to some people that um, do that. And it, it's, uh, it has massive benefits of rehabilitating injuries. And it also, uh, for a, a lot of people, gives them significant gains when they use it as opposed to just using weightlifting. You slap electrodes onto yourself. They, they, they put these pads on you, and it's hooked up to a machine. And yeah. while the electricity is going into your muscles, you're doing exercises. I, I don't think people know. You don't lose that much ability, you know? You have to understand who you're talking about. I'm not much into sports, barely any, honestly. I really don't watch sports. But this one, I'm extremely interested in this fight. I really want to see Mike Tyson win this fight. I heard that Jake Paul was going to be wearing headgear and everything, but I think that turned out to be false information, and it's going to be a straight-up fair fight. And I think that'll be something interesting. I'll definitely watch it because I'm rooting for Mike Tyson 100%. I'm not a huge fan of Mike Tyson or Jake Paul, but I'd much rather see Mike Tyson win against Jake Paul. Let me know in the comments your thought about this fight, if you're ready for it or if it's something that you're going to be anticipating. You want to throw in some bets and say in the comments who you think is going to win. We can come back to this video and see who was right and wrong because I think Mike Tyson's going to win. If he loses, it could be potentially a fake fight, <laughs> but maybe not. We'll see, but I have a feeling if he loses, and especially if he loses fast, it's probably a fake fight, but... Who knows, maybe Jake Paul has the punches to throw against old Mike Tyson, but I think Mike Tyson still has it. And once again, my flabbers have been gasted. I thought this commenter was lying, and it turns out that not only were they not lying, there's actually more to the story. Cicadas are the strongest urinators in the animal kingdom. So not only are they screaming, they're peeing like pressure washers. And while they're screaming and peeing, they're also doing each other at a rate at which they are being ravaged by a STD that turns them into zombies. To the zombie thing in a second, but there is something called the cicada. Because when you walk around a forest that they are inhabiting, they are peeing so fast uh, that it's like it's raining when you're walking through. So back to the nightmare STD situation. The STD, fungus, whatever you want to call it, takes over the male and it rips its balls right off the body. When that happens, chalky spores are spread around to nearby cicadas. And once these cicadas are infected, the fungus also has a hallucinatory effect on birds. So to recap, the cicadas are screaming. 
the cicadas are pissing at a rate that it's raining in forests. They are zombies. And the birds are on LSD. Cicadas are fairly innocent little bugs, but they're terrifying. Where I live, cicadas come out during the spring and summer, and all you hear outside is cicadas just screaming. It sounds like this. Pretty accurate. And uh, man, let me tell you, I've had some experiences with cicadas that gave me nightmares. <laughs> One time I was in an old house. I was hanging out with a bunch of friends at the time. This was years ago now. This woman that was with us, she opened up the outside door and in come this screaming cicada and it was just hostile. It was hitting us, it was flying, it was screaming. It was terrifying. Even though they're very harmless, they just look extremely terrifying. It was terrifying. <laughs> Cicadas are not my favorite, but I do kind of like how it sounds outside sometimes when cicadas are out there screaming because it does sound kind of nice. But other than that, stay away from me because they're scary. They're new images from James Webb telescopes, but it's showing extremely warped space time. It's literally physically showing us warped space time. This guy's saying like it's crazy. Not only light gets warped, but time gets warped as well. What? 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 There's like this star, and it looks like it's like stretched out in like a tube. People are saying like parts of the picture. They're like, oh, you could say that this part was taken like a three thousand years ago. Okay. And this part that you're looking at here is current day. The same picture yes what? yeah that's the most irritating thing about space time is that everything is at such a great distance that we're seeing it years after it even existed it could possibly not even exist anymore but we're still seeing the after image of its existence the light coming to us i don't know though it just makes me wonder if that's just more foolery that they try to feed us because there's no space but i do like to believe that there is an outer space i do believe that there's distant stars and everything i think that how it works is past our understanding and it's not necessarily about time or anything like that there's probably a filter out there that just distorts our image because it's kind of like if you look through water water has all this ripply waves and everything becomes super distorted it's probably like that out in space there's probably a fine layer of like space water and it distorts our way of viewing because we can't travel that far out if we do it's going to take a long time eventually if we do end up traveling that far we might find a water barrier that we can pass through and everything will become clear again that's just a theory that i like to hold on to so for anyone walking around going i'm a chosen person and there's a magic sky daddy with a wand granting me the power over these people and granting me to be able to slaughter these people in his name. In his name, it's always a man. Never forget, it's always a man. That's why this planet is run like a giant bachelor pad, because we always give toxic male energy. It's a fact. It's an absolute fact. When you go to those regions of the world, you see that women are heavily oppressed and you see the absence of the divine feminine. And that's why those third world countries look like that. They look like that, not because they're third world. They look like that because there's no feminine input. There is no divine feminine. It's been wiped out. It's been oppressed. And so what you see there is a bachelor pad. Everything's one color. Everything's dirty, nasty, breaking down, garbage in the street, plastics all over the place. Just a mess. It's an absolute mess. Everything's turned to dust, blowing buildings up, blowing up people, blowing up, killing everything. That's the mindset of the chosen people. I'm chosen. When you see it from my perspective, you find out it's something totally different. It's not I am chosen. It's this universe is chosen. It's the multiverse is chosen, and I'm happy to be a part of this. You see the difference? You see the pivot there in mindset? You see that pivot in mindset? Imagine if those people had that mindset, that pivot in their mind, realizing that, oh, it's not about me. It's about us. It's about us, not me. I think times are changing. I do think, do think we're leading down a path for equality in, it, in the next... 40, 50 years or so, I think we will see true equality across the board, but it's going to take some time for sure. Do you think that there's a lot of male toxicity out there, or do you think that maybe we're just 
blowing it up out of proportion and everything's already equal and or everything is where it needs to be as far as how the motion is set. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And for the people that are subscribed, thank you so much for being subscribed. And for the people that are not subscribed, I still appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you for watching. And don't forget, soon I'm going to start up questions for DK. So if you want to leave me a question that's asking about conspiracy theories, theories or personal information that's not too personal, leave a comment starting with question for DK. That way I can find it in the YouTube search results and be able to answer these questions in a future video. I'm a believer in Jumancy. I've seen it work. In my building trades, I have seen what are called dowsers at work and seen major companies, uh, government agencies, uh, others that have actually almost secretly employed water dowsers and uh, diviners to determine what. My first experience was <clears throat> in about 1974-75, I got hired to build a pole barn. And so the the client had bought 15 used telephone poles that he had. And he called me and said, is there some way we can use these to build a barn? I said, yeah, well, let's build a pole barn. We'll just, we'll put, we'll put the poles into the ground vertically, and then I'll just frame a structure onto this thing. You know, I'll run purlins around to tie them all together. I can build a roof. I can finish it off, all of that. And, um, he said, okay, so <clears throat> we had a, a building site there uh, where, where I was going to build this barn. So back, this, back then you could call Ma Bell. This was the, the telephone company that handled North Georgia, right? You call them up and they would charge $8 a pole. They would send their auger truck out. They would drill the hole and then they used their boom and they would set the pole for you. It's a pretty good deal. Eight dollars. So we had 15 poles. So what I did was I went out and I figured out the layout of this and every place I was going to have a pole. I had, so I had it three rows of five each. That was the 15. And I remember they were what, like 15 feet apart or something. Anyways, at each point where I wanted to put a pole, I drove a stake in the ground. So I had 15 stakes in three rows. Call Ma Bell, the phone company. They Their auger truck comes out. There's Two guys up in the front of the cab in their Ma Bell uniforms. And then in the in the back, this guy gets out. He's real tall, skinny guy. He might have been 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Overalls and an old wrinkled hat carrying what looked like a violin case. Gets out of the back of the truck. Comes walking down, looking the side over. And these other two guys are standing up at the truck, waiting. And I'm going, okay, who, who's this guy? What's he doing? What, you know. So I'm standing aside there, you know, while he comes out. He opens up his case, and he takes out two swing rods. Now, you know what swing rods are? I don't. Okay, so let me explain what a sp swing rod. Now, in, in, there's different ways you can make swing, swing rods, right? What he had done was he had taken the old-fashioned automobile antennas and, you know, the telescoping kind and had a little ball on the end. <clears throat> and he had two of those. And he'd cut it off so that the larger outer sleeve was about maybe this long to where you could grip it. And then he bent it at 90 degrees, and so it was free to swivel. So he had two of those. They're referred to in the, in the dowsing field as swing rods. Yeah, and I'm looking at him and I'm going, what the hell is this? What the hell is he doing? And I'm looking up at these guys, and, I'm, and they, they were kind of like, I remember they were kind of chuckling or something because... I'm standing here, I got my tool belt on, and, you know, like, well, this is, I'm sure that they're not pulling my leg, you know. But anyway, so he goes and he starts walking with the swing rods, holding them in front of him over each of the stakes I had driven in the ground. And as he walks, so now, meanwhile, as he's walking, they're just kind of gently swaying back and forth. He steps over them, and as he'd step over each stake, he'd holler up to the guys at the truck, clear. He walked over all 15 of my stakes in the ground and said, clear. Now, between me and the main house, there was a like a, a garage building, and the driveway to the property came in and went to that garage building. 
and I knew that the water main came into the property somewhere along there, and it probably crossed the the, the driveway to get to the house. <clears throat> So this guy, he goes walking over towards the driveway, and he gets about midway across the driveway. And I'm watching this whole time. I'm about as far away from him as, you know, probably one end to, to the other of this room we're in. All of a sudden, it looked like almost as if somebody had grabbed the ends of those swing rods, yanked them into an X, and then they bent. They bent like I could see him bending literally bending down, and then he took a couple of steps off, and they relaxed, straightened up, and went back to just... Then what he did was he walked in a zigzag fashion, and every time he crossed, where the water main came in, he'd get a response, and I could see it. I could see the response, and it was, it was pretty impressive. And just then the owner comes out, and he says, yeah, yeah, I think the water main does come in right there. And I'm looking at it. Now, this is fucking interesting. And then he turns to me and says, you want to try it? I look at the guys at the truck. Sure, why not? He gives me those swing rods, and I go walking. I stepped across that point, and I felt like I got, you know how you like if you get a strong charge of static electricity? Mm -hmm. That's what it felt like. I've actually heard of this before. Yeah, and 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 I, it, it, it felt like somebody grabbed the ends of those rods and swung them into an X. Now I've tried it since then, and I've gotten a, a, a response, but never like that first time. I, I mean, I don't know. I was caught off guard or something. I was, and maybe it also had something to do with him being there, right? Now, since then, I've known probably half a dozen other people. I gave several lectures to the uh, Appalachian Society of Dowsers back in the 90s, and I got to know a bunch of these people that were like literally like contracting out to, to you know, building contractors, to other things, literally people who were paying them money. And, you know, if you read the scientific literature, you know, oh, it's skeptical. It's, you know, it's, you know, they have these tests where statistically there's no indication that there's any greater uh, effect of that. But I totally think it has to do that there's really subjective things going on here. Because, like, first of all, I've tried it a lot since then and, and gotten mild responses, but never anything like that first time. Where it was, it was, sh it was shocking. It was actually shocking to me. Um, but after that, I came to believe, yes, there are these energies and, and humans can detect them. We know animals detect changes in the geomagnetic field. And why is it so incredible that moving water underground or moving water in a fault line or two mineral or crystalline deposits moving into each other couldn't create enough anomalies or fluctuations in the geomagnetic field that they could be detected. Water dowsing is a very interesting thing to me because I have seen it personally with my own eyes, someone finding an aquifer by water dowsing. When I see this stuff work, it makes me think that this is a form of old technology. When we talk about lost civilizations that had advanced technology and things like that, I feel like things like this is a form of that lost technology. I think that people of the past were using the earth as its own form of technology. And it's pretty amazing to see this stuff work in person. Have any of you guys seen dowsing actually work or have you tried it yourself? Because it's something that's real. March 1811, something appears in the sky called the Great Comet. People were terrified of it. It was the brightest thing in the sky. And you could even see it during the daytime. Wow. But they said the coma of this comet was a million miles wide. What? 50 times bigger than the sun. And in 1811, there was a solar eclipse that happened almost on the same path that this coming solar eclipse is about to happen. Two months later, there was massive earthquakes uh -oh. that happened in the New Madrid fault line. So after the solar eclipse happened, this fault line shifted. But 
when it shifted, the earthquakes that happened were the worst earthquakes America's ever experienced. Wow. They said there's over 10,000 earthquakes. These locals said the earth was literally opening up, swallowing trees and forests. It's yeah. crazy. But we actually have a comet going around earth right now that will be most visible on April 8th. This comet is called the, the devil, devil comet. comet. This comet was first discovered in 1812 Josh. and it has a 71 year orbit. I did the math when this comet first appeared. It was 1811. What does wow. this mean for me? Because I'm an Aquarius. Oh, well, we only have one more day before this eclipse event happens. So hold on to your seats and maybe we're, we're going to start experiencing more earthquakes because of this eclipse and maybe that's why we're starting to see and feel more earthquakes happening here in america but we'll see just another day and it's gonna be here have you all seen this a photographer captured this about 12 hours ago the statue of liberty the torch and we all know that the statue of liberty is not a statue of liberty it wasn't a gift from france we all know that the statue of liberty is a representation of lucifer there are plenty of paintings that look just like it. The Colossus of Rhodes looks just like it. There's there's so many representations, but that is Lucifer. The torch he is holding is the torch because he, Lucifer is the light bearer, okay? Look at the face on the Statue of Liberty. That's not a woman. That's not a beautiful woman. That is Lucifer. That is a picture of Lucifer, all right? And he's holding that torch. He has chains on his feet. It's representing Lucifer being released from the pits of hell. And look at this photo that was taken 12 hours ago. The lightning struck right there. Bang. Isn't that crazy? Lightning striking on, the, on Lucifer's torch. That is very symbolic of just a lot that's going on right now. The... Eclipse is about to happen. Weird things are happening. People are seeing demon faces, demon ears. Lots happening. But this is for your entertainment. Hit follow. I don't know if the Statue of Liberty getting hit with lightning is really that symbolic. I mean, maybe it was intentionally made that way, but I'm pretty sure the Statue of Liberty gets hit by lightning more than 500 times a year. It's made out of copper, so it's going to be extremely conductive. But as far as it looking like Lucifer, I definitely see the resemblance in that, and that's probably where they were aiming. It's a hidden message between higher elites. They're like, oh, well, we're going to give you this French woman, this French woman, but it's actually Lucifer. And it's a symbolic sign of power to the people that worship Lucifer. That would be a theory that I would have. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that the Statue of Liberty is a symbolic image of Lucifer? Or do you think that maybe we're just overthinking it? It looks so claymation. Well, so you it, think this is not even real? I don't think it's fake. I just it's think it's so fake, dude. It looks like two gray potatoes. It looks so man-made. Like, that makes no sense. So you think this is a fake? I think that like, this is such a bad fake scale of what an asteroid looks like. Even whenever it gets close, like what is that? Because these could either be absolutely massive or this could literally be a pebble. I was so shocked whenever I opened up the comments to see how well the brainwashing is working. Amazing how they are able to precisely time the impact of something traveling. Oh, they're traveling 20,000 miles per hour? There's absolutely Wait, no, no, no. no way. They're not. Works. If they were traveling 20,000 miles per hour, it would just be like. <laughs> <laughs> it would. <laughs> I'm not a scientist. I cannot break down the science of how they landed on that asteroid so precisely with it doing all the things that it was doing. I don't know. I kind of on, am on an agreement with these individuals. I do think that it was fake. You know me with NASA. I think a lot of NASA information is false just to keep us engaged, to keep us wanting to spend our tax dollar to fund their business. But it does look very fake, and I get it, it's out in space, things have to be limited, but there's so many principles that just do not sound right when you hear it from a scientist. But then again, I'm not a scientist, so whatever they say is kind of gobbledygook and it goes over my head. But my eyes can see something doesn't look real about this. The physicists at the CERN facility in Switzerland said they found a ghost. Yeah. I didn't say it. The physicists at CERN said it. They said they found a ghost. Okay, let's look into this a little bit. So they themselves said 
They found a 4D ghost in the particle accelerator. They measured and qualified an invisible structure that can divert the course of particles and create problems for particle research. Like I said, they're saying it, not me, that they found an invisible 4D structure. They describe this as taking place in something called phase space. The 4D invisible structure is a result of a phenomena known as renaissance. I hope I pronounced that word right, but I'm a name butcher. They also said the particles don't follow the exact path they want them to. They just fly away and get lost. So I don't know how this invisible 4D structure that makes particles fly in different directions is a ghost, but they said it, not me. So CERN found a ghost in their particle accelerator. Why am I not surprised? Okay, I'm just letting you know. Shabadoo Bushkies, Shabadoo. I'm not 100% sure if this is real information. I didn't really deep dive into it. I'm just going off of what this individual said and shown. If they really are finding invisible particles in this system, that makes me wonder. Maybe we are within a realm that has its own life and everything running in it as well. And maybe that realm is a physical realm that we're starting to interact with and we're bouncing off of the objects in that realm because we're kind of running in the same space. It's kind of hard for me to explain my thoughts on this exactly because it's super scientific and I, I'm not smart enough for all that. But the way I see it is there is a, there is our space, which is the physical realm, and that realm, the invisible realm that they're running across, could be a physical realm to those individuals in that realm, and we're colliding with them. And that makes me wonder if maybe some of these Mandela effects are actually because we're colliding with this other invisible realm that they're talking about. Maybe it's a realm that's almost just like ours with some minor changes, a part of the multiverse, if you will. Pretty interesting theory. What do you guys think about this? Do you think that maybe there's a invisible realm that we're colliding with? Or do you think that it's a spiritual realm? What do you guys think it could be exactly? Because this I actually found pretty interesting. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. As always, if you were interested in any of these clips, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.